I'm going to show you how to decoupage with napkins and tissue paper on your scrap pieces of drawer fronts, particle board bookcases, or pallet wood. Grabbed it up because look, solid wood. It's a pullout out of old cabinets that you could set your hot stuff on use for a cutting board. Still smells like onions. This was the two ply one. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. And why it's important to get just the top ply off is I had a beautiful headboard and I only got one of the two plies off. And I always keep these, just throw these in a spot and I don't waste those. So this is my little trick. The best thing that I've done to help me with this, you can set and try to lick your fingers and do it and try to get that ply off. But the best thing I have found is and I like this one because I can see it easier. Like to, where is that pin? Um, take it and just like you're picking a splinter or something, um, that's fun for some people. It's not, you know how you try not to kill your person you're working on. You just wanna go on the top layer, not the nerve endings, right? I probably will distress this edges. Sometimes you wanna tear them and rip up. And the other thing you have to think about when you're doing a technique like this is your base color is going to show through. So let's just rip it a little bit here and there so it's not perfectly. Liquid patina, love this stuff. If you ever start working with this to decoupage, you will never buy Mod Podge again. I use my paint pixie, a little dusty. And then there's a big dusty that's this size. So this fits in the sample and this fits in these bigger ones and it's great. Just remember, you don't have to wash your brushes out with the DIY paint, but you do with this. Like these edges, you just take a sanding block and it'll just make this beautiful, firm, this sharp edge on there, it's awesome. Okay, and I just work with the wrinkles because you're not working with a high quality decoupage paper here. You're working with a napkin. It's gonna tear, it's gonna be wrinkly. Just go with it. It's just gonna look like this was made with boards from grandma's house that she wallpapered a hundred times. I just, I love that look. It's nostalgia. Love old chippy layered. I used to paint things perfect before I was a DIY retailer and started watching all these lives. And I have branched out and I would consider myself an artistic painter now and let somebody else do those perfect ones. I didn't know I loved it until I just started doing it. I can do the perfect, but I don't want to. Look how pretty this is looking. Oh my gosh. Look, I have too much of a perfect edge here, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip me some off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Guys, just get scrap board and just go for it. And you can get the technique and the feel down for it and then do, you know, your nicer big pieces with some real decoupage paper or this. Let's do that. And for durability, you can go and let this dry and put another layer over it. It had the little knob on it to pull it out. This is the feathers. I love them all, I do. Also, I love this one so very much. Pabo, the, peaco uh, the peacock stamp from Iron Orchid has even a stamp of these big scrolls on the tail that you can use totally for other things even if you don't do, do the peacock. So let's do this one. This is the bird one, it's really stretch in there, but you don't want to get too crazy because you don't want it to mess up your details. So just get it in there. Like on this, you kind of want to tip it out. Now you take your clay, air dry clay is what this is. You can use hot glue, haven't tried that. I hate hot glue, um, working with it, um, but people have success. You can use a resin pour. I haven't tried that yet, got the product, haven't tried it. So work this down in your hand. This needs work down from the warmth of my body because it's a cheap grade clay. But Iron Orchid, you wouldn't want to overwork it because then it gets too soft. It's good. This is good for your soul. This is good stress relief. Okay, so let's roll it like a snake is the best way to do it, in my opinion. 
Let's fill this little puppy up. You can do it. The Iron Orchid Sisters, they do it with their fingers all the time. But I like my Iron Orchid. Um, you can use a credit card. You can use a texture tool. Um, but you smash it down in there. You want it smashed down enough that it gets that detail. You get that in there. And then we want a nice flat surface for it to set on our thing. So, to whatever project. Air dry clay, you do have to go ahead and glue it on immediately or either stick a whole cookie sheet, make up a whole bunch and stick them in the freezer. And that way you can work with a whole bunch at a time if you want. Go ahead and painting the iron orchid mold air dry clay while it is still wet will help prevent some shrinkage and some cracking. But you just can't pound it with your paintbrush. You gotta be kind of gentle so you don't lose your detail. This micro ridge helps you to get a nice flat surface is to just go like that and let gravity help you to get it out. You want to remember there's a right side and a left side on most of these. And one time I was getting super organized in my house and I went ahead and pre-stamped all my envelopes with addresses and stamps. Yeah, wrong side. I'm still working through that pile. Having to tear it off and like set the stamp. <laughs> yes, the liquid patina. Okay, this is 29.50. It's a big jar. I think they make them a little. I don't carry the smaller jars. I'm like, if you're gonna go, go hard. So get the big one. That's. I mean, I usually keep all sizes of the other stuff, but that one, no. If you love to do it, you're gonna go through it. So get the big one. It's more expensive than um, Mod Podge, but I'm telling you, it's more fluid and it's more easy. It's non-toxic. It washes out. To me, it's worth the money, and probably it goes just as far as the thicker. Mod Podge that would have to be, you know, you could, you would really tear up your napkins and stuff with that. I've done that. So I'm just telling you, it's worth it to me, but I get it when you're building your crafting and you're having to make choices of where to fudge and where to go ahead and spend. Totally get it. You could do this with Elmer's glue watered down. Okay, you can. But now if you're doing a nice piece of grandma's handed down furniture, spend the money if you can, you know. But on these cheap ones, I get it, using something cheaper. It's just once you use the good stuff, it's hard to go back. It really is. It's really worth the money. Because he's a whole different, dang it, Bessie. <laughs> I was supposed to be, <laughs> and I, anyway. Aren't these pretty? Let me see. I seen a picture on Pinterest and I copied. So I'm just mold, 19 to $20. And if you don't have a retailer close by that you can go hug, love, and squeeze in person, I can mail out. I buying my big corn and green beans and it's just for this. This is actually just regular tissue paper, but look how fun. Look how fun that is. Because DIY paint goes over metal. And this kissing booth and queen bee and the trim mold and the bird and the flower mold. So there's several molds on here, but you can get away with one. But Okay, so what you need to do, in my opinion, but you don't have to, to get it all up in the grooves and to spread out the details without smashing the details before it's dry, water bottle. This is a Mr. Bottle. And just kind of, and I kind of like the yellow getting on the green. Um, before it's sealed, it's gonna blend to make another color, but it looks like a shadow to me. So just, just go with it. So if you will do that, it will help it to run into all the grooves. Don't forget when you're doing molds, you can layer them on top of each other to give another dimension and that looks really cool as well. The wrinkles look so good if you will heavily distress it. It shows the paint underneath and it just gives it another dimension. I didn't do it on this piece, but definitely try it. Here I'm using the new swoosh letters and going to stamp some fun on these pieces. I do sell all these products in the description box is my links. I don't have them all loaded on my website, but by the time you watch this, maybe someday I will. Just let me know, private message me and I will get you the products. Here I cut the paper and here I ripped it. So you can tell it does make a different edge. 
DIY mint chip and farm fresh layered. And I use the DIY liquid patina to modge podge and seal the whole piece. I gotta stop stealing the cute napkins at the family get togethers.